question based on, on your last point here and the whole idea of the residential college. One other statistic that I think we all know over the last 30 years has been this growing gap between, you know, whether it's economically in terms of power or whatever, between the haves and the have-nots, or, or those who, <clears throat> just the rising gap between, like you even, when you showed the $100,000 and above families, but how small a number that was. So, you know, how much of this, when you talk about the trends going forward in higher ed, are that more students are going to be, you know, in the for-profits and, and so forth, but isn't there a scenario where what that means is, though, that they're still the, the leaders 30 years from now, might be a smaller number, but they're going to be those who are in the residential experience and, and so forth. And I just think when you said about marketing, you know, part of marketing might also be to market what's, you know, are we leading or are we just going to follow trends? And part of the marketing might be, you know, marketing which experience is the one that actually is going to create the type of college graduates that we need. There's, you know, very little of the conversations I hear about online and how we have to follow what online is doing. Talk about the experience that they're doing. And talk about whether it's actually valuable beyond the fact that it's convenient. Um, so, you know, I just, I mean, that's well, a part the, of the But the, the studies are saying that, that more and more people agree that that online learning is every bit as effective in terms of college. I'm not talking about online, I'm talking about the for-profit model. Mm -hmm. right? The online part, I think, I certainly agree. I think a lot of folks agree that residential colleges have to adapt and adopt, and I think places like our colleges are. But the, the whole for-profit model and the idea that the bottom line is, uh, any organization where 30% of their budget is spent on marketing, you know, you have to ask what that means in terms of what they're producing. Only 30% is put on faculty, though, too. Yeah, well, that's my point. <laughs> Well, I wasn't arguing for 30 percent. I'm just arguing that we tend to starve our admissions operations. Um, but Dana College in uh, Nebraska was just brought <coughs> as a proprietary and will maintain the same kind of activity, so they say, mm -hmm. and um, will continue doing that. Um, and so they could, the for-profits could look more like us if they wanted to, unless we look better. And more value added. Um, the, one of the more scary things to me is a lot of states I work in in the Midwest are building residence halls for their community colleges. Yeah. New York State. Yeah. New York State. New York, too? Yeah. Well, these are most of the ones I know are in the Midwest, and that's probably primarily because there's such a distance. You can't, it's not, not a peep otherwise. But um, when Penn State went to uh, allowing all its two-year feeder colleges to become universities, four-year universities, it wiped out some, it didn't wipe out, but hurt a lot of the private colleges in that area because same thing, it looked alike, it smelled alike, it, well, it didn't smell alike, but anyway. <laughs> uh, and uh, that's why we've got to be very thoughtful about what we're doing that's value-added other than the, just offering a good classroom experience. And that's why the residential, in my mind, is key. It's harder to duplicate. Most of you're right. Most of the not-for-profits don't want to. They want a little thing. So um, anyway, I think uh, uh, all I'm doing is really laying out some of the issues and do what you want with them. <laughs> uh, this is going to be a little hard to see, I think, but it's sort of interesting. This is about secondary school, um, the next two graphs. And what they did is ask educators to talk about benefits of uh, using mobile devices for teaching. And if you notice, the darker line are principals, and the lighter line are teachers. And what it says, basically, are the adventurers tend to be the administrators who see this as more of an interesting thing than the teachers who are actually in the trenches. It doesn't mean it's bad or good, but it does suggest a couple things, as does this one, which I find even more interesting. This is comparing uh, working teachers with kids in uh, education programs who, uh, who haven't gone into, uh, haven't started teaching yet. But you'll notice all the high-tech stuff is really, But virtual labs, simulations, uh, podcasts, video, online textbooks, far more attractive to emerging teachers than it is to the current teachers. But that's the problem, is the new people come in and have to <coughs> take on an older 
uh, regime of how we do business, and I think that's uh, a bit of a concern. Well, not a bit of a concern, a big concern, because the technology is changing a lot faster than most of the people in our faculty, including our many of the staff. Interesting ad, uh, invention, which has gone beyond it incredibly fast, mm -hmm. is the iPad. Students see it as a way to save money. <clears throat> um, educators see it as a way to put PowerPoint in and do a lot of other things that you can just do right from your iPad. Um, and as they claim it as a chance to fundamentally change how we do college education. We are working with McGraw-Hill. We do a lot of their market research with college um, administrators and so on and so forth. And they're working on a digital textbook. And that's what this textbook is meant to do. I mean, it's incredible what um, they expect it to, to do and how it's expected to be done. And they're within, they think, two years of this. Now, I'm not saying only McGraw-Hill's doing it, by the way. You know, Peterson's is doing it, and Pearson's doing it, and Doubleday and the whole nine yards. So, but that's what the new learning book is going to be. But the textbook people are more concerned about cost in many ways than others because they know it costs so much for one to print one of those books. You can do it and put it on an iPad. It's a heck of a lot cheaper. Plus, you can do the value-added stuff. But I don't know how many of our faculty members are already thinking about how to use iPads. Now, I have one school that's giving them out to all their freshmen this year. But I'm not sure they know what they're doing with it. <laughs> well, I know. I mean, it's, just, it's like the laptops years ago. No one knows what to do with them either. Um, changing gears, one more time. Uh, I want to talk about the five shifts which I see and others see coming. One, um, we're moving away from the age cohort to uh, a flexible, more customized experience. Uh, we now group people by ages and or progress. Um, it'll probably be done by individual. You'll, you'll have a much better way of saying, all right, this person should be in this position where this one's back here, and you'll be able to modify it. Um, we already talked about this, but uh, Digital uh, content is both faster and cheaper, and that's going to make a lot of difference. Um, sequential to adaptive basically means there's no flat um, content. It's all customized learning. It's uh, your own pace. Uh, it's made a more your learning more productive, and so on and so forth. And that's coming. That's slower than I see a lot of things done, but it's definitely coming. When you get into gaming and automatic testing and so on and so forth, that's going to change the whole way we look at keeping score. I think we're going to have to look at that because it's going to be much more instant feedback. It's going to be, uh, uh, you know, there's going to need to be award mechanisms that are built into the, uh, the software or whatever, where it isn't by then. And then in the last one is institutions uh, to networks instead of uh, your group could be, in, could be a network and probably is to some extent, or you could be a partnership. Networking is a much bigger, larger number, not larger than this organization, but larger. And so I think you're going to see more people um, uh, build learning uh, um, networks and they'll be overseas, they'll be here, there'll be corporations, there'll be zoos, and so on and so forth. So I think that's going to be one major changes. <clears throat>